A chucking good life, a recap. I've been through this before, but I have got lots of new friends now. There will be very bad language, because I have to say it like it is, or like it was. Driving a truck owned by my employer in Nottingham on contract to the company Ostend in Belgium, Mainhout, otherwise known as Manau, and uh, young Stephen in the office over in Ostend. They sent a container over to the UK, which had to be delivered at Banbury in Oxfordshire at 8 o'clock. So I picked the container up at the docks on, on the way to Banbury. I think it was Banbury. Anyway, I got stuck on the M25. And the phone rang. Stephen says, Hello? Arthur? Hello, Stephen. Are you at the customer yet, Arthur? No, Stephen. How long will you be, Arthur? I don't know, Stephen. Well, can't you give us some idea, Arthur? I said, Stephen, what do you want me to do? Sprite wings and fly over this fucking lot. But, Arthur, if you don't get to the customer on time, the load will have to be rebooked. I said, Stephen, fuck off. End of the call. So I phoned Mick, the boss in Nottingham. Same procedures. Uh, Mick was telling me. The phone around, Mick says, hello. Michael? Hello, Stephen. Arthur is swearing at me, using very bad language. And I only want to know what time he will be at the customer. Mick says he'll get there when he can, get off his back. Thank you, Mick. So, I got to the customer, feeling tired, irritable. I'd left the docks early. It would have been nice to stop for breakfast, but I hadn't got the time. And a cocky youth come bouncing up, shipping an iron container. Open the container doors, driver, and if anything falls out, we're not responsible. Well, that fucking wound me up for a start. I said, I'll open the container doors, but if anything falls out, don't even think about blaming me. The youth says, you're the driver. I said, I didn't fucking load it, you stupid bastard. It was loaded in China. He said, don't you swear at me, I'll fetch the boss down. I said, I can fetch you the fucking area light down. I got back in the cab, slammed the door. <laughs> you know, short fuse. And the boss came down, what's going off here, driver? I said, look, it's a sealed container. I don't know what's in it. I don't want to know. And all I've done is bring it from the docks. And I can't be held responsible if anything. But he says, all right, driver, all right. He says, we get these youngsters a bit of power. It goes to the head. <laughs> and uh, the container was unloaded. And uh, the youth glared at me, but I didn't apologise. No way! Ah! Then I picked up another seal container, this particular time, for a customer at Worcester. My job to open the doors and close them, and the customer's job to either load or unload the container. I opened the doors, there was Australian wine. I thought, oh, that's a Mike Air bottle. So, I sat in the cab, my favourite pastime, crosswords, uh, nap, as I'd left the docks early. And the bloke came up when the container was empty. He says, two cotton short, mate. He says, what are you fucking telling me for? I didn't load it. He says, what attitude you've got? I says, I didn't load it, you silly cunt. It was loaded in Australia. If there's anything wrong with the load, phone the shipping agents, and they'll phone the customer in Australia. Don't bother me with it. So you blows come here with that too like Well, you know, it's not. It was nothing to do with me. And I know I was irritable because I wasn't well at the time, and of course being very tired, not being allowed to stop and have breakfast. So short fuse. Then before Ostend, uh, we Kevin worked for him as well. Pino in Birmingham on contract. And uh, Jackie, I love Jackie. I got on so well with him. I think Kevin can remember Jack, Jackie. And uh, she sent me to a customer once at Hucknall. Pick up carpets for export. And I got there just outside Nottingham. And uh, old man couldn't get in the warehouse. He'd lost the keys. And the boss came, a little Indian blow, opened the doors. And they said to me, you get in container driver and we will hand carpets to you and you stack that. I said no it's your responsibility you are supposed to organise the labour 
I got no one. I got no one else except old man here. I says, well, tough. I will phone your boss. I says, yeah, okay. I gave him Jackie's number, but I spoke to her first. She says, go and have your breakfast, Arthur, and take your time over it. Leave him to me. And she told me afterwards she read in the right act. That driver works for me, not you. You organise the labour. It was a 20-foot container. You've got two hours to load that container. If it goes over, you will be charged. Cost jacket your peril. And uh, when the container were loaded, the old man who was on his knees came and knocked at the door. <laughs> and I got out, closed the doors, put the seal on it and gave the Indian guy, who was very flustered, he, he was virtually on his knees. He should have got more labour. And uh, I gave him the shipping documents to sign, and he scribbled in a temper and ripped the document. So, staying cool, calm and collected, I wrote some more out. I said to him, the shipping line won't accept the torn document. Could you sign it again? He glared at me. I thought, you stop, little bastard. Who the fucking hell do you think you are? Hey. Then Jackie used to say, I've got a good load for you off, it will get you home. I said, oh, thank you, darling. She says, to Armitage is at Colwick. I said, Jackie, how many more times have I got to tell you? It's Colic. It's spelled Colwick, pronounced Colic. She says, yeah, I know. I like to wind you up. <laughs> but she will wind up the morning at Southampton Docks when it was fog bound and all the vehicles were at standstill, nothing moving. She said to me on the phone, go and see that Burke Adolf in this shipping line office. She didn't like him. Ask him if he's got anything local. You can do. So I phoned her back. I says, no, Jackie. He said, you know what the situation is down here. She says, how the fucking hell do I know what the situation is down there? I'm stuck up here in fucking Birmingham. Go back and tell the silly cunt. I said, Jackie, Jackie, darling, calm down. There's nothing moving. The docks are fog bound. There'll be nothing moving until the fog lifts. And she could be fiery. And she sent me once to Daventry. I got Andrew with me to pick up JCBs in an open top container. Brand new yellow JCBs. They loaded them, put chocks behind them, chained them down and everything. They couldn't put a sheet over The JCBs were sticking over the side and they were for export to somewhere in Asia. And driving back along the M6 to Birmingham, to p &O Birmingham, where they put them on the train for the docks, uh, I left the motorway, Spaghetti Junction, and heading down to P&O's yard, and the police stopped me. Police car in front, police car at the side, police car behind. And they said, what's going on there? No idea. Then the police officer came up to the door. He says, uh, driver, we suspect these JCBs are stolen. I says, well, it's a shipping, it's a shipping order, it's a shipping notes. He says, open the doors. I said, I can't, there's a seal on, custom seal. He says, well, I want to look over the uh, top. Where's the... Steps, I says, they eat none. He says, are you trying to be funny? I says, look, it's a legitimate shipping order. There's the notes. I'm going to Pino's yard, just around the corner there. Come back there with me and let them deal with it. So they gave me a police escort back to the yard. And uh, pulled in the yard. And Jackie was in her office on the phone. And... The officer said to another officer, get a crowbar and break that seal. I said to Andrew, go and fetch Jackie out. So Andrew ran across and she came out of temper. <laughs> you touch that seal, you'll be in trouble. Customers have got more power than you lot. <laughs> yeah. You don't cost Jackie. And uh, she was great, but of course, that's history now. She's gone. And there's a hell of a lot more, but I don't want the video to go on too long. And uh, I have been through it all before, but I say I've got plenty of new people now. And I have to use the language of the trucker. As I've said before, you know, it will be no good me stamping and saying, I stamped my foot and said, oh, darn it. Fiddlesticks, no. So, lots more, and I'm supposed to be getting it all down in a book, which I am going to call A Trucking Good Life. 
lots of incidents. I've got an excellent long-term memory. All that was from memory. I shall continue. Put my fag out, and that's it. I'll upload it on this fine day, Monday, the 1st of July. White rabbits, white rabbits, white rabbits. You supposed to say, since you wake up, the first words of the day. Bye, that's it. Cheers. Bye.